and and uh, we can we can read them. So Chiara, are you there? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Good afternoon. Hi, Chiara. Nice to see you. Can can you share the screen? Sure. So, do you see my presentation? Yes, it works. Very okay. good. Okay, perfect. So, so, let's move uh, to the next presentation by Chiara Polito on understanding the impact of host contact dynamics on pathogen diversity. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, thank you so much for the invitation. Um, Yes, my name is Chiara Poletto and I'm a researcher at Inserum in Paris. And uh, okay, I think I, I will uh, just introduce myself. I work on mathematical modeling on uh, infection transmission from human to human. So it seems to me that it is a very different scale uh, with respect to what I saw uh, so far during these talks. Um, but I, 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 I'm not an expert of molecular epidemiology or plasmids, but I hope that in terms of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, approaches or perspective, uh, uh, you will find the uh, method interesting in particular I would much appreciate uh, your feedback in the sense that uh, what I'm going to present you is some theoretical works, uh, let's say, on, uh, on some uh, um, interaction, ecological pathogen, uh, ecological aspect of uh, uh, pathogen spreading. And now we are continuing trying to, to figure out uh, the implication of our results uh, uh, in practice. So, uh, okay, so let me start. Um, um, I'm interested in the structure of human to human contacts, uh, contacts that mediate the transmission of pathogens. And uh, in particular, this contact network, uh, we know that has a, a critical role on the risk of an epidemic at the population level and on the epidemic trajectory. And it's also important for the design of intervention. Uh, however, the majority of studies, uh, uh, there is a strong attention on like uh, epidemic of a single pathogen spreading on the top of the nas this network. Um, but actually it's not true. And clearly there, is, uh, uh, there, is, uh, there are many pathogens circulating at one time, or also uh, or we may be interested in considering the structuring of a pathogen in, in, in its multiple strains, because uh, this may have an important role concerning emergence, dominance, consistence, uh, or ecological path patterns uh, in pathogens. And we know, well, clearly you know more than me, how this is important uh, in terms of antimicrobial resistance, but also I'm interested in other infection like uh, influenza infection, like COVID. And uh, this, uh, this is important for uh, vaccine design or for uh, anticipating uh, the trajectory of uh, epidemics. So uh, if we are interested in, uh, in the drivers of emergence of new strain, for instance, or dominance coexistent patterns uh, among different strains, we know that there are multiple factors we, we need to, to pay attention on. We need to pay attention, of course, on treatment or, or, or interaction uh, mechanism. Um, that may act, act among strains. So we, we know that strains can compete or cooperate or they, maybe they don't interact too much, it depends uh, uh, on the pathogen. Um, but actually, I'm interested on, on a higher level, and in particular, um, uh, actually, uh, um, how the population behave, the human population behave and interact may affect uh, uh, like the ecological dynamics between strain, given that strain is spread on the top of this population. And in particular, uh, my specific focus would be on contacts, so the structure of the population network. And this specific uh, subfield, let's say, it's a field in which there is some interest. I'm reporting here uh, some, uh, some publications. So the point is that uh, if I consider two, let's say, let's imagine two pathogens or two strains, uh, choose to study agents, let's say, uh, with the different traits, like different transmissibility or different, uh, let's say, duration of infection. And the quest typical question is, uh, which one is favorite? So which one will dominate? Well, well actually, 
uh, uh, there are several studies, uh, each of, of these focusing on different aspects, but actually in common, the point is that uh, the answer of this question, so which will, will dominate, well, the answer is depends on the structure of the population. So one pathogen may dominate in a certain population, while another may be favored if the, so the population has other characteristics in terms of contacts, in terms of behavior. And uh, okay, we did some work on this direction and uh, I, I want to, to, to uh, let's say, uh, we'll discuss in particular, uh, um, for sure one publication, maybe if I have time, I will uh, uh, also discuss a second one. Um, okay, so um, let me start with the motivation of our work. I, I stress that it was a theoretical work, but it was motivated by, by the spread of uh, Staphylococcus aureus in hospital settings. So hospital settings have uh, peculiar characteristics in terms of uh, uh, population behavior. So we have a small number of individuals, relatively small, so uh, for sure less than a, a city or a country. We, we have uh, uh, tens, hundred units of individual confined in space. When we have few individuals, a stochastic effect became become more, very important. And then we have uh, high turnover. I mean, patients enter the hospital, spend a certain number of days, and then get out. And this turnover, of course, affected the, the interaction between uh, people in the hospital, but also is responsible for exchanging uh, uh, bacteria or pathogens in general with the out, outside of, of the hospital. Then we have uh, uh, other structural features of the network, like you have VARD, and so uh, people tend to interact more within the same VARD, uh, but still we have exchange of people and bacteria uh, uh, across VARDs, and we know that there are contact heterogeneities. What does it mean? That some people um, are more active so make more contacts than other people. And if we, 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 we think about the hospital, of course, we know that healthcare workers make a lot of contacts uh, with all patients and among, uh, among uh, each other, uh, while patients instead are, uh, move less in general and make less contacts. So healthcare workers cover an important role uh, on the propagation of bacteria uh, in hospitals. And uh, uh, these, all these elements are, are recognized to be central in, in the circulation of bacterial infection in hospitals. And, and, uh, but still, uh, I mean, the study of this element was quite boosted recently, or at least an important contribution to this was uh, the use of uh, uh, network data to, to, to characterize the pat this pattern of interaction. In particular, we have data on exchange of patient across, uh, uh, across VARDs or across hospital, or we have data of face-to-face -face interaction. Uh, um, um, so uh, well, I will go directly to this slide. So we'll present this study that is the individual-based investigation of resistance dissemination. This is the IBER study. Uh, I had uh, uh, the pleasure to, 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 to work with this data, even if uh, I was not involved uh, in the project. This project is a collaboration between different institutions in France, like the Pasteur in CERM, uh, um, in RIA. And what it did was simultaneously, so it was a long-term healthcare facility uh, structured in uh, five um, um, words. And uh, for a duration of four months, they monitored monitored the face-to-face con -face contacts. This can be done with the RFID technology, means that it's a sort of tag that you wear. So they ask people to wear this tag. And it's highly sensitive in the sense that uh, you can detect only face-to-face -face interaction because it's sort of signal that you send from one tag to another. And uh, this signal is weak. So if people are far one from the other, you don't see any, any signal. And, uh, and so you can detect really the face-to-face -face or or also physical contacts if you make the signal very, very, very weak. So these are the kind of interaction that may, may be considered a proxy of the interaction relevant for the transmission of, of, of nosocomial, nosocomial infection. But what it was interested is that in parallel with the collection of these 
contact data. They also collected the colonization, data on colonization status, uh, and so we throw weekly NASA swaps. And, uh, um, and uh, these, these, uh, um, these uh, swaps were subtyped, so we could, uh, 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 we can observe a plot like this one in which we can see, we can see the different strain spreading um, week by week. Uh, and we can see we, that there is a dominant strain, other strain maybe are less, less uh, prevalent. Um, okay, so that was, uh, I mean, all of these motivated a theoretical question. The question is how the structure of the network, contact network, determine the, the, the plot that you see on the right. So the ecology uh, is seen at this level between the different uh, bacteria strain. So uh, uh, the ecology here can be, can, can be characterized in terms of overall prevalence, but also in terms of uh, richness. So that means how many strains you see in terms of uh, abundance of each strain. In particular, we can define also, we can also analyze uh, uh, indicator of evenness or dominance. So uh, do we have that the strain dominating dominate a lot or do we have instead a situation which all strains are more or less uh, uh, equally uh, distributed among uh, infected cases, colonized cases in this case. So we can use an index using the ecology that is called Berger-Parker, that is simply the proportion of the dominant strain over, um, over uh, all strains. So if this is high, if this goes close to one, clearly we have a situation in which uh, uh, we have dominance, so this strain is dominating, well, instead, if this value is low, means that we have a, a equal partition among strains. Okay, so uh, um, uh, we wanted to understand how contact heterogeneities affect um, uh, um, these uh, ecological indicators. And we did this through numerical simulations, meaning that we can simulate a, a situation in which, uh, I mean, uh, we can simulate a network of, of contacts that is, uh, um, let's say, reproduce the same property of contact networks in, uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, the hospital uh, setting. In particular, uh, what, what we design is a, a dynamic network in which every day, no, uh, here I'm talking about nodes, but nodes represent individuals. So we know that individuals every day make different connections or every hour, every uh, second. So in this case, connection change in time. And we have also individuals entering the system. So entering the hospital and uh, carrying new, new uh, uh, bacteria or new pathogen in general. So uh, every time an individual entering the hospital, we made this hypothesis that it, it brings a new, a different strain. So in principle, we have an infinite population of strains. And, uh, um, and we, we consider a neutral hypothesis in the sense that uh, we make the hypothesis that strains are identical in the way, uh, let's say, in the epidemiological trait, so transmissibility and duration uh, of, uh, uh, we speak about, uh, given that I'm a theoretical model, sometimes I speak about infection or, or, or colonization. I mean, in reality, this represents more the colonization of, uh, of staphylococcus aureus. And uh, okay, so if we compare, uh, it's an important point, an heterogeneous network with an homogeneous network, what does it mean? In a heterogeneous network, some nodes are more active than others. So they make more connection. And this represents really a situation like medical doctors and, uh, and uh, 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 like patient, where we compare this with the situation in which we have an homogeneous network, in which all individuals are more or less equal in the way they behave. Well, okay, doing our numerical simulation, we find something that more or less seems uh, uh, the, 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 the picture of the data uh, in the hospital. So, uh, uh, a stochastic dynamic of multiple circulatory strain. But actually, if we look at the indicators, we can see that according to the network, we have different uh, outcomes. So this ecological dynamics is, uh, is different. So uh, we can see on the left that the prevalence doesn't change so much. So uh, we have that in the homogeneous network, um, the 
uh, uh, here uh, on the x-axis, I'm finding the transmissibility. So I'm exploring the hypothetical transmissibility of this pathogen. So increasing the transmissibility, of course, the prevalence increases. And in the homogeneous and heterogeneous network, prevalence values levels are uh, more or less similar. Uh, if I have a, a, a high heterogeneous network, uh, so gamma represented the heterogeneity, lower is gamma, higher is the, the, the heterogeneity. So if I have very heterogeneous network, I can see that uh, the prevalence is slightly lower, but uh, uh, the difference is not so big. But actually, I can see that the difference is bigger in terms of richness. So if I have an heterogeneous network, I'm, I have lower levels of richness. So I am able to accommodate a, 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 smaller, uh, a, a smaller number of pathogens. And, uh, um, Okay, it's interesting if we see on, on, on the right uh, um, the, uh, the Berger Parker. So the Berger Parker quantify uh, uh, the, the dominance, and we can see that in the heterogeneous network we have higher level of dominance. So um, Okay, so this is this. We try to, to understand why the network may change in this way the ecological dynamics between strains. And uh, 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 what we find uh, is that we find an explanation. This may be understood in terms of the property of the network itself. So uh, there is a, a, a nice study by uh, Levantal collaborators that was published in 2015 that uh, explained this mechanism why a heterogeneous network prevents, um, let's say, uh, hinder the emergence of new pathogens, new strain. That's because highly active nodes tend to be, uh, uh, in general, uh, always colonized because they are uh, more easy to reach by infection. And if they are colonized, making the hypothesis of mutual exclusion, it's harder, I mean, uh, for, for a new strain to, 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 to percolate uh, in, in, in the network. And, uh, uh, but at the same time, and here is the plot I'm showing the bottom, if a strain manages somehow to colonize a, a highly active individual, it will spread through the network and we will have the so-called super spreading event. So we will create a situation of dominance. So we try to analyze uh, this with respect to the hospital network. So uh, uh, as I told you at the beginning, I was showing this, uh, this, uh, um, this plot in which uh, we see the different strain uh, circulating in the data. But uh, if you check the, the Berger Parker index, we can see, I mean, a certain level of the Berger Parker index. Uh, um, and uh, uh, so we try basically to make simulation and actual network of data uh, um, that was measured and compare this simulation uh, um, with the randomization of the network. Okay, so uh, if we randomize the network, we destroy basically the properties of the, this network, in particular the heterogeneities. And what, what, what uh, we can see is that uh, the simulation in the, in the actual network, this is the blue band, I'm showing the confidence interval, show a, a level of Berger Parker that is more compact, compatible with the data, while instead the simulation in the randomized network show a Berger Parker that is lower uh, and it's uh, less compatible with the data. So this means that uh, the heterogeneities in the network uh, may, let's say, somehow explain part of the dominance observing the data and uh, um, at least they contribute in explaining the dominance observing the data. Um, okay, so I concluded this, this part uh, of my talk. And uh, uh, so we tried to, to, to use, an, to adapt an ecological perspective to characterize chain population. And what we found is that contact heterogeneities in the introduction of new strain from the, uh, from the outside. And so this reduce the richness of an ecological uh, um, system. Uh, um, but at, at the same time, the few uh, successful strains are amplified and create super spreading events. So we have a situation of more dominance. Um, 
so the model so far is very simple. Uh, in the future, we want to, to account for other as more realistic aspect, like uh, for instance, maybe not a complete mutual exclusion or also differences in epidemiological traits. Okay, I think that I, I finished my time. I was having another project, maybe uh, I don't know if uh, I would have the time to, to explain it. So I just uh, go directly to acknowledgement. So I wish to thank my, my, my co-actor uh, um, and uh, the work I presented was published uh, um, before COVID pandemic. And here is the reference. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Chiara. Yes. So, um, is there uh, any comment or any question? So, uh, otherwise, we again move uh, questions and answers to. I have a question myself. So, uh, how important is this uh, assumption of exclusion? between pathogens. I mean, you say that when one individual is affected by a strain, it cannot be affected by another strain. So how, how is this? Uh, so are, or are you looking at a single, uh, um, say, infection or a single pathogen and multiple strains? And, and, and you say that in one pathogen, in one patient, there is only one dominant uh, uh, strain? Uh, yeah, so uh, um, in, in my case, I make the hypothesis of mutual exclusion. So if I colonize by one strain, I cannot take the other. And uh, this is, uh, I think, reasonable. And now other people, maybe here in the audience, know that more than it depends a lot on the bacteria we are considering. So for Staphylococcus aureus, it's quite reasonable. Uh, I think this mechanism is really the key. Well, I, I don't think it's necessary that there's a total mutual exclusion to obtain these results. But uh, this kind of uh, uh, at least a partial mutual exclusion, I think it's the key for, for creating this, uh, this uh, ecological mechanism I was showing today. Um, uh, there are other studies in which uh, instead uh, there is sort of a uh, urelax a bit this assumption and, the, uh, and I know that the mechanism you may find are quite different. Uh, I think this is something we, we, we I mean, we should uh, explore more in the future. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chiara.